Pictorium, WTOG Television presents Indoor Eastern Division North American Soccer League action. Tonight's game, the Tampa Bay Rowdies versus the Fort Lauderdale Strikers, is brought to you in part by McDonald's Restaurants. Now for tonight's game action, here's Tom Keen. I'm Tom Keen, along with Bob Wolf, and we greet you from the West Palm Beach Auditorium. And this is the opener for the Tampa Bay Rowdies of the 1979-1980 North American Soccer League indoor season. And Bob Wolf will be joining us in the booth throughout the indoor season. And Bob, before we chat with you, we'll tell the folks that uh, when you're not with us, you're handling some of the great sports events for the Madison Square Garden uh, sports events. And you were also the president of Madison Square Garden Soccer. And we welcome you to Rowdy Soccer, an exciting <laughs> time here on Channel 44. Well, I'm just thrilled to be here. Uh, yes, I was the president of the team long before the big soccer revolution came around. <laughs> they had fans up there, but the Tampa Bay fans are just something else. Uh, tonight, I'm looking forward to this game with great excitement because tonight's game has some overtones of ice hockey, and it has a short field, as you know, mm -hmm. and it has some unusual things. A lot of the folks who've seen indoor soccer I know are well acquainted, but for the newcomers, they're in for tremendous excitement. If I can just take a quick moment to speak Please. about a couple of things. One is, of course, on a penal offense, you're in the penalty box, so you play a man short, and there are six people to play with on a side to begin with. Then, if the, the uh, ball goes over the wall uh, on purpose, that's a penalty coming up. Of right. course, it'll go over the wall unintentionally. Mm -hmm. Now, we should also point out that in this particular type of offense that they can go and rebound their own shots up against the wall. So we'll see a lot of passing going on to a teammate against the wall, and they'll even try to come in on the goal and get the ball up against the uh, wall or the screen, get the rebound, and then try to get it in. Almost using the wall as an extra man. Yes, that's part of the strategy of the game. In fact, uh, Gordon Jago has mapped out a couple of plays coming in on goal. He'll shoot it just to the side of the goal, so the goalie will go over there, but the ball will come out, somebody else will kick it in the goal, he hopes. <laughs> it's it's got to be exciting for everyone yeah. involved, too, because this is actually the first ever indoor, full indoor season. Of course, the Rowdies have been going at it in exhibition and tournament play since 75. Uh, the coach must be excited, too, to be able to, to go for something like a, an NASL championship. Yes, he was not only excited, but he's been drawing diagrams all day. In fact, uh, the Rowdies have two units. They'll play a unit of five and a second unit. And the unit can be described best as a 1-2-2 a two, two formation with the, the uh, forward a little bit up front and then two just behind him. And, of course, they always want to make sure to get back quickly when they lose possessions. They'll have a defender always back to make sure of that. But this particular offense, they think, is designed to get the most goals and to get the most scoring. And that's what they want to do, jump out in front and stay there. Bob, let's take a look at the rosters for both Tampa Bay and Fort Lauderdale. First of all, the Tampa Bay Rowdies. And uh, starting in goal for Tampa Bay is uh, their great goalkeeper, Jelko Balecki. Winston Dubos also on the roster, their fine goalkeeper from last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, Winston uh, doesn't look to get a lot of playing time tonight. No. I might say, as far as playing time goes, that this is a squad game. 14, of course, on the squad, because they're going right over the boards there about every three and a half to four minutes. There's unlimited substitution. So everybody plays. Let's run down the rest of the Rowdies roster for you. Uh, it's John Gorman, Arsene Auguste. Uh, John Gorman, will tell you, is uh, experiencing his first indoor play ever. Very interesting there. Jan van der Veen in the Rowdies roster. He has elected to stay here in the uh, United States rather than go back to, to Holland and play during the winter. Jan will serve as the team captain for the mm -hmm. Rowdies this year, replacing Rodney Marsh. And uh, Wes McLeod, Peter Anderson also in the lineup. Two fine midfield forward players. Doug Wark returns to the Rowdies after playing them uh, with them indoor in 1975. Peter Baralich, fine Yugoslavian player, also experiencing his first indoor play. Farouk Qureshi, young Sanji Vanjikov, Tommy Maurer, and Keith Peacock, a brand new player coming to the Rowdies, who is also serving as assistant coach. That rounds out the Rowdies roster. The Fort Lauderdale Strikers, uh, I think in talking to a lot of people, have come up with a, a, a what we would have to think would be a weaker lineup compared to the, the, the star-studded Rowdies roster. Yes, but they're playing at home. And that makes a difference. In fact, it's the first indoor soccer game to be played over here in, in West uh, Palm Beach. So it's sort of a home away from home, you might say, but it's considered to be their game. And they brought some fans along. Of course, when we get back to Tampa, wow, the noise will be deafening. Incredible. 
that uh, Fort Lauderdale roster. Arnie Mauser, the former goalkeeper for Fort Lauderdale, in goal. Zara Husen is their backup. Roy Wigamanson, Tony Whalen, our field players, and uh, David Irving, Bob Koresh, Steve Rabalski, and Tony Crisatelli also in the lineup. Tony Whalen, their fine captain, Mike Ortiz Velez, Mario Slack, Tibor Jamari, Al Niji, a local fella, Colin Fowles, another ex rowdy, and rounding out the roster, Kevin Murphy. Let's get ready for the kickoff of this exciting first indoor league game. I'm all set. It should be fun. Looking forward to it. Okay. Bob Wolf and Tom Keane will be back with the kickoff right after this. Tom Keane and Bob Wolf back with you now from the West Palm Beach Auditorium, and uh, we await the kickoff. Uh, a crowd filing in here, Bob, uh, and a lot of them have to be wondering what the heck they're going to see tonight because it, uh, since they really haven't played at all over here, the Rowdies and the Strikers have played many times at the Bayfront Center in St. Petersburg, but uh, some of these folks, I think, are going to be in for a real treat. Well, as you said, a lot of them are going to see for the first time, it's the first game they've ever played over here, just what's going on. We pointed out on our pregame remarks a few of the uh, differences we also should point out that there are four 15-minute quarters. Correct. And overtime if needed. Okay. And in that case, it's sudden death. So there are a lot of innovations, shall we say. And, of course, there are a number of changes from last year's indoor rules and previous years. We'll relate to those as the game goes along. Right now, let's listen to our national anthem. That's a thunderous anthem, I have to say. <laughs> there is no offside in this game, but no three-zone passes are permitted. The uh, field, as you may note, divided into uh, three parts. And the starting unit that uh, Gordon Jago has out there will be uh, Peter Anderson, uh, Wes McLeod, Van Devane, uh, Auguste, and Korashi with Balecki in the goal. So that's their starting five, and they'll just play a short while, and the next five will be on there. Of course, the goalie remains constant, although they could make a change there if they wanted. Indeed, and Winston DuBose is standing by. will tell the folks that uh, in a couple of days, Winston will be heading to England and train over there with First Division Ipswich, as he has done the past two seasons. And that's a bit of Rowdy's news for you. Winston has gone the past two years, and Coach Gordon Jago feels that he has learned so much, and they want to send him again with First Division Ipswich. Out there right now, though, only, uh, well, there's three players with, with extensive indoor experience, Wes McLeod, Auguste, and Qureshi. For the strikers, uh, one of the old nemesis is for the Rowdies, David Irving, number 10, who's got a thunderous left foot. Uh, Tony Crisatelli, who's on loan to Fort Lauderdale from the Washington Diplomats. He is a Canadian player. Team captain Tony Whalen, who is their big center back during the outdoor season. Roy Wigamanson also in the roster. He's number five. He's a South, South African player who didn't get a lot of time with Fort Lauderdale last year. And Bob Koresh, an Englishman. We are underway. The Rowdies in the green. And the strikers in the red and yellow or the hooped type uniforms. 
And here's a quick difference in the indoor and outdoor rules. When the ball goes out of play outdoor, of course, you throw it in. It's a kick in indoor. Here's Vandervain. Pushes it up for Anderson, who's feeling his first indoor experience. All the way back to Mauser. Mauser, the X route, a quick distribution to Wiggum Anson. Up front is Irving and Chris Atelli. Here's Irving, number 10. Lays it back to Whalen. It's going to get by. Vandervane on the mark. Whalen continues to control. Looks far side. Wiggum Anson makes a run down the right side. Here's a ball to Wiggum Anson. Nice run by Roy and Wes McLeod on the mark. Opportunity for the strikers. Cleared out by McLeod. And here come on the run. McLeod on his left. Here's Peter Anderson. Anderson to McLeod. West wants to shoot. No, here's Vandervane. Look for him to shoot. Off the boards. Anderson. Peter Anderson, number nine. Again, Vandervane. Looks for another shot. Off the boards. Here's Mauser with the save. And those are two examples of that rebound play. Trying to get it off there. What they want to do is have the goalie move over to that side so he leaves the other side open. Already a substitution. Vanderbeck on the floor there. Young American opportunity. Chris Atelli with a shot. Vanderbeck, number 12 for Tampa Bay. Perry right now training with the United States Olympic team. They've got a big match coming up December 6 with Bermuda. If they beat Bermuda, they go through to the Olympic final 16. Auguste now. Tough shot. Oh, off the boards. Augie the Bigfoot. You know his power with the shot. Anderson digs it out. Wants to lay it off the boards again. Marked hard by Bob Korish. Anderson taken down. There's a whistle. We'll have a free kick on the tripping call. Bob Korish claiming that Anderson took a dive. Not so according to the referee. Young Vanderbeck over the ball for Tampa Bay. Again off the boards. Opportunity Anderson just wide. And here's William Anson with the rebound for Fort Lauderdale. No score, no score here early on. The first of four periods of 15 minutes apiece. Off the foot of Vanderbeck. Many of the arenas have uh, glass above the uh, boards. But before the ball game, uh, Gordon was out here testing that screen to see whether it will rebound just as well. And he said that'll do the job too. Here's Steve Robofsky now on the floor for the strikers. Gives it off to Bob Corris. Corris looks long upfield for Irving. Irving marked hard by John Gorman, who's now on the floor, along with Baralich and Dougie Wark, the ex rowdy who has a lot of indoor experience. Wark impatient, though, and gives it up to Fort Lauderdale. Here's Corris to Whalen. Tony tries to go by Vanderbeck. Kalishi marking Chris Atelli hard. Chris Atelli, who looks a bit heavy, number 13. And the rowdy's come up with it. Here's Baralich. John Gorman, far side, looking for the ball from Peter. Shot by Bell. It's oh, it got by Mauser. Ever so lucky, our Fort Lauderdale. Here's Bell. It's number 15 for Tampa Bay. Vanderbeck. Perry with a shot off the boards. Dougie Wark for the Rowdies on Rabalski. He comes back to Korish. And here's Rabalski heading up field. Rabalski, an American player. Taken away by Vanderbeck, picked up by Berlich, and here's Doug Ward. Vanderbeck again on Rabalski, two American players, and now Ivanchikov on the floor for Tampa Bay, number 18. Perry wanted to shoot. Tough defense by Whalen. The ball out quickly. Here's American Mike Ortiz Velez, 16. You can see the unlimited substitutions, how fast they get on the floor. Gorman tries to bring it out. Stolen by Whalen. Here's uh, Ortiz Velez, nice give and go, but Vanderbeck in the way for Tampa Bay. Niji now on the floor for Fort Lauderdale. Niji, a graduate of Florida International University in Miami. Gorman now for the Rowdies. McLeod back on the floor. Gives it back to Wark. Here's Vandervane back in. 11 minutes left in period one. Dougie Wark marked up by Colin Fowles, another ex rowdy in the Fort Lauderdale lineup. Grabowski comes up with it. Long ball to Ortiz Velez. In the penalty box is Niji. Battling in the corner is Ortiz Velez, picked up by Gorman, out to Rabowski now for Fort Lauderdale. Steve would like to shoot from here. Does. Gets it off of Ivanchikov, and here comes Vandervane for Tampa Bay. Rabowski with the hard mark up against the boards. Vandervane. Oh, put it out too far. Fouls in the way. There's going to be a foul on Colin Fowles. 
And we'll see how he dumped Vandervey. Didn't play the ball, played the man. It's a free kick for the Rowdies. You see McLeod over the ball. Inside to Ivanchikov, Anderson. With the ball is Anderson. August puts it out of play. With 10.35 left, period one. No score between the Rowdies and Strikers. More in a moment. Ortiz Velez with a shot off of the board. Oh! Al Niji with a heck of a shot, tried to follow up his rebound. Another one into the chest of Galecki. And right there to try and get it is Al Niji, who's been tough in the box right in the last few minutes. Two magnificent saves by Galecki there. They were really storming him. And you can see there was the one he had to come in and quickly pounce on it, or else the harm would have been done. Here's McLeod, shot off the boards. Mauser right there to try and get it is Peter Anderson. Jamari now, fine Canadian player on the floor. He's number 70 and he has the ball. Here's Al Nishi. Nishi tries to go by Auguste. Shot. Wiggum Anson, the South African for Fort Lauderdale. He didn't get a lot on it. Jelko Vilecki had it easy. Evanchikov now. Van Devane shot, yes, first timer. Opportunity now for McLeod, off the boards, but cleared away by Jamari. Anderson for Tampa Bay, but here comes Jamari on the break. It's three on two. Looks for Chris Atelli. Farouk Qureshi now on the floor for the Rowdies with a foot in the way. Chris Atelli, number 13. Shot off the boards. Irving tries to get it, but Van Devane out to McLeod. Nice defense by the Rowdies in tight quarters. Part of the secret of good defense here is to make that quick transition from offense to defense, which the Rowdies have been doing. Auguste number four. Coach Gordon Jago told me before the game he wants Augie to shoot from way outside, and there's a shot off the boards. Anderson, he'll try to pull it over. Yes, McLeod. Mauser with a great save. You see Arnie out of the box now, and that's when he can only use his feet. Came out of the penalty area. The Rowdies get it back. Auguste. Anderson, nice series by Tampa Bay. Vanderbeck in on Mauser. Again, Arnie out of the box to use his feet. Vanderbeck again, shot across the goal mouth. Irving and Wiggum Anson. Long ball to Irving. Make that Jamari in the back, Irving up front. Colin fouls. The ex rowdy a member of the U.S. national team, shot off the board. Qureshi with the clearance. And here's Anderson. Vanderbeck to his right. Vanderbeck on his left. Gives it off to Perry Vanderbeck. Vanderbeck, number five, the team captain. Anderson inside for Van der Beek, but Wiggum Anson clears for Fort Lauderdale. That's a three zone violation, Bob Wolf. The first time we've seen it, it went across all three lines. It will come back, be put in play at the line nearest where the ball went out. Unlike the outdoor game, as you can see, this game is not played up in the air, but right on the field. So you're not going to see too many of those uh, three zone violations. And the reason it's really put in the game is to keep a team from, let's say, late in the game, they're guarding a goal lead, shot by Berlich. And they could just keep kicking it back down into their opponent's zone, and it would destroy the game. Here's Rabowski now, number 14, back on the floor. Looks for a long ball to Ortiz Velez. Nice stuff by Rabowski. Ortiz Velez back to Whalen, number six, Vanderbeck on defense. Whalen shot. Hand saved by Balecki. It was destined for the back of the net. Gorman. Gordon says that he is a man who can make that 15 or 20 yard shot with ease because they have so much velocity behind it. So he says, if you got the chance, try it. Barilich, number 15. Pushed out to Gorman. John with a shot off of Anderson. Gorman again shot. Peter Anderson. Yes. It is a goal for Tampa Bay. Persistence on the part of John Gorman and Peter Anderson in the penalty box. There you see it. Bowser out of position. Couldn't get down. And that's one of the problems Big Arnie has. He's very strong in the air outdoors. In fact, he beat Tampa Bay at home in the outdoor season. I'm sure you'll remember that great game at Tampa Stadium between the Rowdies and the Strikers. But being such a big guy, he has trouble getting down quickly. Here's Vanderbeck, Bob Koris, number 12 for Fort Lauderdale, also in there. Comes back to Mauser. I like the words that the coach speaks about Anderson. He says some of the players 
who plays soccer throughout the world, a little heavy-footed, but he said Anderson's touch is superb. He just caresses the ball. <laughs> and Peter loves the game, too. He says it's an addiction for him. Off to Wark, shot by Vanderbeck. It's going to be over the screen, and this will be a goal kick. Just like outdoor, when it goes over the end line, it's a goal kick if it's put out by the attacking team. Here's Rabalski now. Had a little trouble with the footing. Bob Koresh, an Englishman. Ortiz Velaz back to Rabalski. Tight marking by Barilich and Dougie Ward. Whalen now. Pushed out to Rabalski. Nice run by Steve. And here's Ortiz Velaz to pounce on it. Avanchikov for the Rowdies on defense. Tony Whalen, number six, to Al Niji back on the floor. Koresh, number 12, comes to it. Long ball to Whalen. Gets through to Ortiz Velaz. Avanchikov on defense. Down in the corner. Koresh brings it back to Niji. Lebowski to Tony Whalen. Vanderbeck on Whalen. Tony pushes it far side, and here's Al Niji to run into space. Niji would like to get off the box and shoot. Lebowski now. The striker's having trouble penetrating. Lebowski with a shot off the screen. Whalen. There's a whistle. Gorman in particular did a fine marking job taking his man just staying with him all the way. One nothing is the uh, score right now as the Rowdies jumped out in front. We have five minutes and nine seconds to go in the first quarter of the game. This telecast is the exclusive property of Hubbard Broadcasting and the Tampa Bay Soccer Club. Any rebroadcast or reproduction of this telecast without the express written consent of Hubbard Broadcasting Incorporated or the Tampa Bay Soccer Club is prohibited. And the announcers for this telecast are paid for by Hubbard Broadcasting and or the Tampa Bay Soccer Club. Here's Belenke to pick up the rebound. Out to McLeod. The Rowdies substitute again. Right now for Tampa Bay, it's Gorman, Wark, Vandervane, McLeod, and Ivanchikov. David Irving, Jamari, foot in the way by McLeod, and here's Dougie Wark to come up with the steal. Dougie double, double teamed, and here's Wiggum Anson in the way for Fort Lauderdale. A lot of turnovers. Wark gets it back. John Gorman now. As we said, John's first go in this type of indoor soccer off the boards. Oh, McLeod with an opportunity. Wark on Mauser. Wes McLeod picks up the rebound. Back to Ivanchikov. Shot blocked by Jamari. This will go out of play. It will be a Fort Lauderdale kick in. There's an art also to this unlimited substitution. You don't want to get men changing when that ball is going into the zone that you're defending. Otherwise, all of a sudden, there's an opening. So to get it in just when you're moving in the other direction is the exact art. And uh, the way it reads officially on the substitution is the man coming off must has, have his hand on the side rail before the uh, man coming in is officially legal on the floor. Exactly. David Irving, number 10, center circle. Off to Jamari. The striker's having trouble getting an offense going. Jamari comes away with it. McLeod on, on Jamari. Up to Irving. Irving tries to push it back. He gets the rebound off McLeod's clearance into the corner for Chris Atelli. Avanchikov with nice defense. Auguste tries to push it up to the boards. Almost went out of play. Wiggum Anson with a foot in the way for Fort Lauderdale. And here's Jamari. Oh, Irving tried to turn it for Tibor on a give and go, but no success. Auguste to McLeod. Long ball to Tommy Maurer, his first appearance on the floor. The young American player for Tampa Bay. Pushed out to Vandervane, shot by Jan off the boards. He'll get his rebound. Maurer in the way, almost caused a collision with his own teammate, Vandervane. Maurer now off to McLeod. Wes, oh, almost got a deflection off of Wiggum Anson. Shot again by McLeod. Oh, Vandervane couldn't control to get a good shot on Mauser. And now Korish pushed up to Chris Atelli. Auguste on him. Augie, a tough defender. Chris Atelli gets a turn on Augie, but doesn't get much of a shot inside. Malecki on the save, off the shot by Irving. Rowdies are keeping a careful eye on Irving. He has an excellent shot and very dangerous around that goal mouth. Vandervane now for Tampa Bay with 2.53 left, period one. Vanchikov with a shot off the boards, but no Rowdies there to follow up the rebound. Jamari to Colin Fowles. Steal by Vandervane. Pushed back to Ivanchikov, but here's Ortiz Velez. He's so quick. Ivanchikov now in trouble as Ortiz Velez is on his back. He's pushed down. There's a violation. 233 left period. 1 1 0. Rowdies. More in a moment. 
We are back at West Palm Beach Auditorium, the North American Soccer League indoor season in full swing here in period one. Tampa Bay in the green or dark colored uniforms. Fort Lauderdale in the hooped or red and yellow uniforms. Here's Vanderbank, number 12 for the Rowdies. Perry wants some help from Van Der Veen. Shot by Jan. Mauser with the good hands. Arnie got down well that time. Here comes Ortiz Velez, number 16. Two years ago was the MVP of the Senior Soccer Bowl at Orlando's Tangerine Bowl for the East All-Stars. Mike Ortiz Velez. Now Wayla, number six. Tony would like to shoot. Does. Blocked by Ortiz Velez. Anderson now. Looks like a bit of a break for the Rowdies. Qureshi runs. Nice ball, but Wiggum Anson will come and get it for Fort Lauderdale and push it back to Mauser. Quick out to Niji. Nice distribution by Mauser. Now Niji marked up by Gorman. And we're down out of the last minute of this first quarter with the Rowdies in front. one nothing. There'll just be a two-minute break here between periods one and two, and they'll get right back to it, so don't run off to the cooler. <laughs> you might miss something. Here's Van Der Veen, number five. You will get 10 minutes at halftime, though. John Gorman to Vanderbeck. But we'd like him to bring the drinks back with him so that he can watch what's happening. Indeed. Oh, Colin Fowles cut it out well. Anderson was looking for Vanderbeck. Now Berlich gets in the way, but here's Robowski. Right now on the floor, Bob Wolf, we have two of soccer's Heisman Trophy winners. It's called the Herman Trophy. The Rowdies for Ruth Kovacic won it in 75. And Steve Rabowski, number 14 for Fort Lauderdale, won it in 76. So two of the best that have come out of the American college system on the floor right now. There's a whistle. Strikers are called for an infraction, and it'll be free kick for Tampa Bay in their own zone. John Gorman with the ball. Kick put in play by Qureshi. Here's Balecki. The Rowdies will be patient with just nine seconds. They'll be content to let it run down with that one goal lead. There's a whistle pushing on Whalen. It'll be free kick for Tampa, and it looks like Mr. Whalen's going to the penalty box, Bob Wolf. Our first time for that, it'll be two minutes and that will Tony spill, Whalen. That will spill over into the uh, next Indeed. quarter. Indeed. Now, here's where we have what is termed the power play. In hockey. In, in hockey, it has yeah. also turned that actually yeah. in soccer, which uh, is the words they've been using in this yeah. indoor soccer. Uh, there are many ways to play this. They like to, uh, the Rowdies will try to work in close with somebody uh, right there near the goal to get it to him, perhaps to pass off to one of the, the wings on the side. Barilich, he wants to hit a rocket and does. Oh, deflection off a course for Fort Lauderdale. And the whistle runs out. Nice use of the ball with just seconds left. And the Rowdies have that one nothing lead. We've got another 15 minutes here in the first half of NASL indoor soccer. More in a moment. Tom Keane and Bob Wolf back with you during this first break in our NASL indoor opener for the Rowdies at the West Palm Beach Auditorium. It's Tampa Bay against Fort Lauderdale. And the Rowdies on that one nothing goal, one nothing lead by Peter Anderson's goal. And uh, it was a, a nice piece of work by Tampa Bay. Persistence in front of that goal mount. Yes, and now they'll have the advantage uh, for this power play as we come into the uh, second quarter with the extra man. The, the way to defend against the power play, most teams like to move back into the uh, special uh, defensive zone right. and Let's just mass there. They figure that the more compact they are around the goal area, the better. And they don't want to give those wide open parts of the field. So we'll see how they play it uh, how the strikers play it defensively. So many times in, in past Rowdy's indoor games, uh, you, you look for the power play opportunities, but that, that clogging by the other side does clog things up, and you don't really see uh, the kind of goals you'd hope for. And it also seems that the, the guys who are a man short kind of get a little extra from somewhere and, and really uh, defend very well. There's a minute 57 uh, still to go, just posted up there in the... Uh, the extra man attempt. So the Rowdies start out with a one nothing lead into the second quarter and the opportunity right now to score again. The defensive team incidentally can uh, do the same thing that is done in ice hockey. They can ice the ball, sure. I guess you might call it, to center from one end to the other without having the ball brought back. So that's uh, a usual ploy that is done uh, defensively. For Fort Lauderdale, it's David Irving, Colin Fowles, Bob Koresh, and Roy Wigamanson, Arnie Mauser in goal for the Rowdies who are one up 
on the scoreboard and one up as far as bodies on the floor. It's Baralich, McLeod, Anderson, Farouk Qureshi, and Arsene Auguste. They reset the clock. And we wait for the kickoff. Well, this unit is designed to do some scoring while they have the opportunity right now. So these are the men uh, who are out there for that explicit purpose to move that ball around, get it just to the right spot, and then put it in. Hey, the new and exciting Rowdies indoor season is underway. As we are showing you right now, the first Rowdies home game is December 7th. There are less than 2,000 indoor season tickets available. Don't be left out of the action. Call the Rowdies office now for your indoor season tickets. Operators are standing by. Call 870-1122 in Tampa or 585-1119 in Pinellas County. We are underway, period two. As we said, the Rowdies are a man up. Tony Whalen in the penalty box for a major violation. Anderson. A tough double marking by Fort Lauderdale. It's out to David Irving. Irving going hard down the floor. McLeod. And Bob, I'm sure as you've seen in hockey, sometimes the short-sided team comes up with a goal. Yes, that can happen. That can happen. And we have the whistle on this one. That can happen. Wes McLeod talks to the referee. He says, I'm innocent, but uh, a lot of pushing going on on the sideboards, as you can see. And Wes kind of trips him down without playing the ball, and that's against the law. And the question rises, can you play two men short? Yes, you can if the situation demands. Minute 16 left to go on the penalty right now. And again, Tony Whalen, the Fort Lauderdale player in the box. Wiggum Hansen close. Irving off the screen. Balecki with the save. And we almost saw a short-sided goal. It was a matter of inches. Anderson now. McLeod on the wing gets the ball. Far side is Qureshi. He'll get it. Nice uh, touch by Wes. Anderson number nine. Wiggum Hansen with the tough mark. Here's Auguste with room. Augie would like to rocket one. Does. Out of play. Goal kick. For Fort Lauderdale. Auguste has to get down over the ball a bit more. He's got a, a heavy foot and really hit him hard. You got to get it over. It's like a golf swing to keep it low. Mauser will put the goal kick in play, but the rowdy is kind of clogging things up. Now he gets it off to Corish, who pops it back to Arnie so he can handle it. Mauser played for the rowdies in 76 when they were semi finalists, one game away from the soccer bowl. Wiggum Anson off to Irving. Fort Lauderdale on the attack. McLeod cuts it out for Tampa Bay. Quickly to Barilich. Barilich pushes it over to Anderson, but great defense and anticipation by Colin Fowles. Mauser now from Corridge. Quickly to Wiggum Anson. Fowles broke that up very nicely, as oh. you said. Two on one break there. Anderson tries to push it through for Wes. It's put out of play. The referee will call it a kick in. He will say that the kicking it out of play was unintentional. Auguste, number four, off to Barilich, number 15, for the Rowdies of Tampa Bay. Barilich shot, oh, across the goal mouth. Nobody there to jump on it for the Rowdies. Anderson, inside to Barilich, cleared away by Wiggum Anson, but here's Qureshi. According to the clock on the wall, the penalty time is over, but Whalen hasn't hit the floor yet. McLeod off the chest of Mauser. And here's David Irving. And now the strikers are back at full strength. And they did a good job in uh, not oh. only killing the penalty, but also almost coming up with a score during it. Whalen opportunity. Oh, Balecki with a foot save. And Jelko saves the Wiggum Anson rebound. Nice stuff by Balecki. Ortiz Velez now on the floor for Fort Lauderdale. Goes by Auguste. Augie with the slide tackle pushes it on to Balecki. You got to be a brilliant player to get by Arsene. Barilich looked for the long ball to Wark, who was on the run up front. It comes back quickly to the Fort Lauderdale team. Ortiz Velez. Shot. Balecki plays it off the boards ever so well. We invite you to stay tuned to WTOG for more action and excitement with Yul Brenner and George Chikaris, starring in the colorful epic adventure Kings of the Sun, coming up right after the conclusion of tonight's Rowdies indoor season opener. Ivanchikov on the floor for the Rowdies. Jean Gorman now. Ivanchikov is 18. He is an American. Here's Van der Veen, the Dutchman, the team captain. Oh, Jan goes through off the chest of Mauser. Lovely work by Van der Veen. He looked to Doug Wark, who was up front on the right. 
kind of got a little fake and went inside. Nice work by Young. Wark made a little gesture that time as if, uh, did you think about it? And he nodded yes, so <laughs> he was there waiting. Yeah, right. And for you new Rowdies fans, to reacquaint you, Doug Wark played for the Rowdies in 75 and was an outstanding indoor player. In fact, during the indoor tournament that year that was played out in San Francisco, he was the only Rowdy picked to the uh, all-tournament team. Long ball by Vanderbeck to Vanderveen. Stays in play. You don't see many balls in the air. Novalski digs it out. Here comes Fort Lauderdale. Whalen off to Niji. It's going to be off the boards. Ivanchikov and Niji having a go. It's going to be a whistle against Niji. Free kick already in play and quick distribution by Balecki to Ward. But right now it's four on two. Fort Lauderdale's favor. Ward tries to get by Ortiz. Velez does. Off the boards. Gorman tries to knock it in. Vandervane. Nice work by the Rattles. And back to Vandervane. Jan wants to shoot. Does. Mauser with a chest save. Again, Gordon Jago wants those long shots. And then somebody else like a Gorman in there to pick up any mishandled balls. Whalen to Niji. Oh, out of the penalty area. It looked to me like he handled out of the box, which is illegal, but not so. We play on. Robotska. Long ball to Ortiz Velez. One on one. Balecki with another super save. Knocked out of play by Gorman. That was a brilliant bit of play. Cut down that angle just right and was off his fingertips. I'm not sure from this angle if it's a kick in or a corner kick. It must be a kick in, yes. In the corner, Niji hits it off the board. Whalen now, number six. Vanderbeck loses his shoe on the clearance, and here comes Vanderbeck. Perry will stop to put it on. Here's Ivanchikov. 18, far side, nice ball to John Gorman. Interesting there. With unlimited substitution, he went back over into the uh, other side to put his shoe on, and a substitute came out to take his place. Tommy Maurer in his place. Opportunity for the Rowdies in the corner. Mauser handles. Tough defense there by Whalen. Long ball to Irving. David Irving, number 10. Irving had a bit of a gimpy ankle, but uh, he's looking very healthy right now. Niji, number 19. Niji tries to go by Avanchikov. Here's Vandervey, and the crowd doesn't like it. They thought there should have been a call. Jan out to Tommy Maurer. Maurer wants to have a go. Vandervey to Dougie Wark off the boards. Oh! Just by Vandervey, number five. He gets a foot on it. The Rowdies steal it. Maurer on the wing. Jan with a shot. Mauser with a save. It would have been over the bar. Nine minutes remain now in this second period. The Rowdies maintain that one nothing lead. Back to the West Palm Auditorium after this. 8.36 now left in period two, the second of four periods. The Rowdies and the strikers of Fort Lauderdale. That's one nothing. Tampa Bay. Here's Auguste Farside. Augie number four. The great Haitian for the Rowdies. Jamere comes away with it for Fort Lauderdale. Tries to send it up to fouls, but here's Berlich. Awfully tough to take it away from Peter. Goodness, what a rock. Qureshi now with a lot of indoor experience. Berlich is 15. Looks for Auguste. Nice run by Augie. Anderson. Try give and go. Auguste. Oh, off the boards. Anderson with great anticipation. Fort Lauderdale with a back pass there that could have got him in a lot of trouble. Almost did. Qureshi, long ball to Anderson. Fouls, knocks it out of play. It will be a kick in, Tampa Bay. We're seeing a tremendous defensive struggle. Actually, uh, most of the games you may find anywhere from seven to ten goals totally Correct. scored, but so far it's just one nothing. Rowdy's lead. Irving pushes it into the corner. Chris Atelli back on the floor, number 13. He's on loan from Washington. Shot off the inside of the post. Should have been. Should be equalized right now. Jamari number 17. Here's Fowles. Fowles would like to have a go. Off the boards. Oh, a deflection that could have been danger. Actually, it fooled the Fort Lauderdale players and came right to Bulecki. Here's Chris Atelli on the rebound. The steal. Irving with a volley. Not good work by David Irving. Barilich. McLeod on the run up front. 
Also, Peter Anderson. Here's Wes McLeod. Tries to push it to Peter. One touch. Nice thought, but just a bit off the mark. Wiggum Anson, number five. The South African for Fort Lauderdale. Jamari, number 17. We can tell you if you're wondering about the whereabouts of uh, Stephen Wigerly, Mike Connell, and Oscar Fabiani. They will be in town early in December. Oscar Fabiani serving with the Chilean national team. They are in a tough go with Paraguay for the championship of South America. Can't wait to see Oscar in this indoor game. He'll be perfectly suited for it. Anderson pushed from behind as he went from Van de Veen's nice ball. It'll be free kick for Rowdies in a dangerous spot. The Rowdies love to work these set pieces indoor or out. It's the same basic stuff. There's the shot. Ortiz Velez comes up with it, but August stops him for the moment. Here's Wiggum Anson, number five for Fort Lauderdale. Pushed out nicely to Ortiz Velez. Hard work by Wes McLeod to dig it out. Ortiz Velez with an opportunity. Vilecki with the hand save. Lovely soccer by Ortiz Velez to get open at the top of the box. Interesting to note that Winston DuBose is one of only two goalkeepers in the NASL ever to post the shutout in indoor soccer. Did it last year against Tulsa. McLeod up to Anderson. McLeod tries to get it inside, does. Crosser, a foot in the way. Jamari, who sends it over the end line, so it's corner kick rallies. They put it in play. Van Devane shot, blocked by Korish for Fort Lauderdale. Wiggum answered in the corner, out to Ortiz Velez. Wes McLeod with a steal, and Farouk Qureshi will pick up the pieces. Hey, the competition is fierce and a little messy when five men go after the world's record for speed eating. It's all part of the fun when David Frost presents the Guinness Book of World Records tomorrow night at 9, right here on Channel 44. Is it true you were a runner-up in that competition? I was in pizza, the pizza category, one of my favorite foods. It's one of the toughest categories. <laughs> that crust sometimes. Nice ball inside Rabalski to Ortiz Velez. Again, the striker's unlucky. They've had some opportunities. They've shot well, but just off the mark. The board's in the way. McLeod. Anderson. They want to give and go. Peter shoots. Hand saved by Mauser. It was destined for the back of the net. It's still 1-0 Rowdies. Nice camera work as they show Rabalski and McLeod having a go. Now Niji and McLeod. Here's Jamari for Fort Lauderdale. A foot in the way, McLeod having a great night as he blocked that one. Gorman for Tampa Bay now to Van Der Veen. Beyond running hard, wants to shoot. Off the boards, nobody there. Here's Gorman. Oh! I thought it was going to be deflected in, but Mauser comes away with it in quick distribution. Niji, opportunity. Vilecki having a brilliant night so far. Van Der Beek on the floor for Tampa Bay. Battling with Ortiz Velez. Two of the fine American players on the floor right now. 12, Perry Vanderbeck, number 16, Mike Ortiz Velez. This is amazing end-to-end -end action. It just takes a few seconds to get from one side to the other. Indeed. Here's Anderson. John Gorman, number three. Pushes it out to Vanderbeck. He'll try to cross, but right now there's nobody there. He holds it up. In the corner, you see Whalen battling on the boards. Comes out to Gorman. Korish on John Gorman. Here's Ivanchikov, number 18. Tight quarters along the boards here. Whalen comes out with it for Fort Lauderdale. The Rowdy should have switched play a bit. They had a lot of room left side. Ortiz Velez, 16. Cross off the boards. Balecki saves it. Good thing he did because Niji was right there for Fort Lauderdale. Ivanchikov. He is 18. Pushed far side to Vanderbilt. Irving came on for Fort Lauderdale. Thought he was going to get the steal. Very little give off those uh, boards off the wall around the side. I went out there and wrapped it before the game got underway. There's no give. It just ricochets right off. Vanchikov, number 18. Oh, nice ball, but Mauser comes out. It's going to be kick in now. And uh, 320 left in period two. One nothing. Rowdy's more in a moment. Tom Keenan, Bob Wolf, back with you. West Palm Beach Auditorium, NASL Indoor Soccer. This is the season opener for both of these squads, Tampa Bay and Fort Lauderdale. Strikers on the attack, off the boards. Niji with a shot, cleared out nicely by Gorman. Harry Vanderbeck, number 12 for Tampa Bay. Gorman into the middle to Barilich. 
Oh, off to Anderson. Shot. Yes! Oh, what a marvelous bit of soccer from Peter Anderson as he turned ever so nicely and then hit it first time. 2 nothing routings. Peter pleased. He's never played in this indoor variety of soccer before, but some of it's the same, Bob. And he's got both goals for the Tampa Bay Routings. This one coming at uh, 2.30. And it's a 2 nothing game. 2.30 left in the first half and period two. We'll have two more for you before this one's all over. And a point of interest here, this is the season opener for the Rowdies. They have played indoor at the University of South Florida, but not under these conditions with the boards up. Shot by Irving. He tries to get his rebound. Wiggum Anson chases it down. The strikers have had one go in here at the West Palm Auditorium with all the boards up. Oh, Wiggum Anson muffed on it. He had an opportunity. He's upset. Number five, Roy Wiggum Anson thought it was goal number one for Fort Lauderdale. In mapping his strategy before the game, uh, Gordon Jago says that in his unit of the three men up front, Anderson is the most forward man, but he'll be the target at all times. He wants him to control the play. You've seen the result. Two goals by Anderson. There's a whistle against the Rowdies from behind. It was Vanderbeck with a bit of a push, and it's free kick. Fort Lauderdale. Here's Colin Fowles, number 22, former Rowdy. Graduate of Long Island University, member of the United States national team. Chris Atelli, number 13, on loan to Fort Lauderdale from Washington. Turned by Fowles. Irving and McLeod having to go in the box. Whalen now shot off the foot of John Gorman. John comes away with it. This is a Rowdy's breakaway. Pushed out nicely to Dougie Wark, who's crashed into the boards. We play on, though. Advantage Rowdy's. McLeod wants to shoot off the foot of Wiggum Anson. Fort Lauderdale comes away with it. 113 left in the first half. 2 0 Tampa Bay. Irving, opportunity. Oh, again, a deflection that takes the goal away from Fort Lauderdale. Another shot that was on its way to the back of the net. Work out quickly to Barilich. Peter with a rocket. Mauser brings it back into the penalty area so he can handle it. And now Tony Whalen, 50 seconds. Strikers would like nothing more, Bob Wolf, than to get one here in the final seconds, but the Rowdies are tough. McLeod off the foot of fouls. He was looking for Dougie Wark on the right wing. Chris Atelli tries to turn it off the boards. Not well struck. Barilich out nicely to West McLeod. One touch soccer. Pushed on to August. Oh, he tried to pull it back for Wark or McLeod. Here's Robofsky to come away with it for Fort Lauderdale. David Irving with 10 seconds left. Number 10, David Irving. Chris Atelli can't get the rebound. Cleared away by Farouk Kureishi. Robofsky gets it off the foot of Wark. Shot. Deflection. Oh. Irving can't get it. That's the end of time here in the first half. And the Rowdies with a 2-0 lead. Two goals by the fine touch of Peter Anderson. And this Belucky just was magnificent in this first half. Shutting out the Fort Lauderdale strikers in this first half. Just tremendous. And, of course, Anderson, as Tom told you and described those goals, coming up with two big ones. It's quite a feat to shut out anybody, even for a half in this indoor soccer. Well, I'll tell you, Bob, it's also nice for Jelko because I'm sure a lot of fans will remember our telecast of the Moscow Dynamo game last year. He played the first period, was bombarded because he never played indoor before. He's obviously learned and learned well from the Rowdies and Coach Jago. Hey, I'm very excited about that home opener on Friday, December 7th against the Detroit Express. I can just imagine the noise in there when the Rowdies are at home. It is chaos, and it will be exciting. Also, before we leave you for a moment, we want to tell you that the Rowdies outdoor season tickets are also now on sale. We're talking about 1980. All seating is reserved, and you can select your favorite seats now and pay 1979 prices as well. Save big now on outdoor season tickets. Select your favorite seats by calling the Rowdies office now. Operators are standing by. It's 870-1122 in Tampa, Hillsborough County, and 585-1122. One nine in Pinellas will be giving you those numbers again throughout the third and fourth period. We'll leave you for a moment. It's two nothing Rowdies and uh, Peter Anderson, as we said, with both goals. And uh, Bob Wolf and Tom Keane will be back with you here in the second half in moments.
I'm Tom Keene. We're here at halftime at the West Palm Beach Auditorium in our indoor game between the Rowdies and the Fort Lauderdale Strikers. With me is Marsha Schallert, the Rowdies Public Relations Director. And Marsha, we wanted to kind of uh, talk to the folks about indoor soccer and the Rowdies' involvement in indoor soccer. As we've said already in the first two periods, this is the first full legitimate season of indoor soccer in the NASL. But uh, the Rowdies and George Strawbridge have really been involved in the indoor game since day one since 1975 when they were the runners-up in what was then the NASL tournament, indoor tournament. Then they won the whole thing in 1976. In 1977, the NASL decided they were going to drop indoor soccer for a while and really put all their energy on the outdoor game. But the Rowdies didn't drop it. They stayed with it, playing exhibition games all the way through. And really, this is the very first time that the NASL has put forth an entire season. George Strawbridge was really behind it. He, he, of course, the owner of the Rowdies, and he, he's been instrumental in, in keeping it alive in the Bay Area. And uh, what, were his, uh, involvement, what was his involvement in, in getting the NASL, trying to convince them to, to go full tilt? Well, he's been the chairman of the indoor committee for years now, but I think part of George Strawbridge's attachment to indoor soccer is emotional. It was, uh -huh. after all, what introduced the Rowdies yes. to the Bay Area. And it, has, it started a love affair that has lasted to this day. And I think the Rowdies organization and George Strawbridge feel a very special commitment to indoor soccer. You know, it's interesting that Dougie Wark has returned to the Rowdies roster. He's been gone a long time, but he was a, kind of a special guy back in that first year to, to help interest the fans in indoor soccer. In 1975, when the Rowdies were the runners-up, as a matter of fact, Dougie was the only Rowdy to be named to the all-tournament team. Yeah. And he's the only Rowdy who's ever played in indoor in another league. The rule changes, I'm sure the fans will continue to get used to them. Uh, they, both the major indoor league and the NASL got together, correct, and, and kind of changed things for the better, I hope. Well, we hope it's for the better. There, uh, the changes I think that the fans will notice is probably, uh, they're probably minimal. The main thing that they're going to notice is we've got four 15-minute periods mm -hmm. now instead of 320. And uh, the enlargement of the goals, is that uh, another movement by the league to increase scoring, which they've also wanted to do outdoors? Well, it was also done, too, to encourage heading, which is, we think, a very beautiful part of the game. Mm -hmm. And with the goals being lower, uh, the game was played predominantly on the ground. Now that they're higher, we, we're sure that there'll be more heading in the game. Thank you for being with us at halftime. Thank you. Okay. Marcia Schallert, the public relations director for the Rowdies, will have more halftime commentary and the third period kickoff right after this. There you see it at halftime. We're at the West Palm Beach Auditorium and the score looks nice for Tampa Bay fans. Two to nothing, Rowdies and uh, Peter Anderson uh, leading the way for Tampa Bay, Bob Wolf. It, it looks delightful. <laughs> and uh, a two nothing score is very different in this league. Uh, scoring is actually part of this game. And the Rowdies are doing a tremendous job. They're actually doing a wonderful job of going from the offense back to the defense, that transition. They do keep a defender back. That's sort of like the safety valve. He's back there also to get passes, but they try to weave their men around. So as they move the ball from one side, somebody on the far side is always moving back. They want to keep the flanks always covered. And they're doing that well. Nonetheless, Balecki has had some tremendous saves in goal. And of course, we've seen the two goals polished off by uh, the Tampa Bay Rowdies as Anderson has picked up both. Now, so far in the game, Tom, there's been just one penalty. So we just uh, see. Now, there's an oddity to me about the penalty. The one time that I thought that the Rowdies lost their momentum was when they, they had the man advantage. And you think so? Well, I think the tendency is to press a little bit more and kind of change your flow, and, and you think you're going to have an easy time of it, but That's right. actually it's more difficult because they clog it up, as you said. Yeah. And then when they came out of it, when they were back at full strength, they had a little difficulty and just seemed to get the flow back, and gradually they did. But sometimes those riches can do you in. <laughs> You know, the point I was trying to make in the second period is, is that, you know, this is early in the season. Both clubs have not been able to play a lot with the boards up, with the big goal mouth, and uh, I think we'll see more goals in the second half, and certainly as the season goes forward. Oh, no question. And there are some players, believe it or not, who are actually playing this first Americanized version of yeah. indoor uh, soccer. They haven't played it before, really. And it, it is different in some areas because we don't see the long high balls and it's a much more tighter controlled game and uh, you got to work on that. Also, in order to come up with the perfect indoor game, the rules change a bit from year to year. Oh, yeah. We've seen right now they're playing the, the four quarters. Uh, this means it takes tremendous stamina. 
I mean, when these fellows run, they're running for four minutes at top pace. And when they go over the boards and take a respite, they just slump over the boards sometimes. And that brings up a part of the strategy, keeping the new men in at the right time, getting them in on the move at the right time. And so far, well, the rowdies are on in front, and that pays for itself. And as we've mentioned, uh, before the home opener, December 7th, the Rowdies will have their two fine South African players, Mike Connell and Steve Wegerly, back in the, in the side. And also Oscar Fabiani will be back in town. And uh, we look forward to all those players. They're top-line players. And right now we're going to look forward to the second half. And Bob will hopefully more goals. Let's hope so. We'll see you in just a moment right here on Channel 44. Tom Keene and Bob Wolf back with you for period three. Fifteen more minutes in this period, and we are underway. And with each period, they change directions. McLeod tries to turn on it. Vanderveen with a rocket. Oh, right to the chest of Arnie Mauser. What would I give to strike a ball like that? My goodness. Long ball to Ortiz Velez. He'll try and turn it. Now we get a whistle. They're calling it three zone. Three zone violation. Bit of a late call. And, and in defense of the referees, the new rules could have them a bit baffled for a while too. Absolutely. I should remind our uh, fans looking in that each game is really something special because the whole season really, except for the playoff, just 12 games, six home and right. six away. So they should get in on the fun while they have the opportunity. Think about it. Here's Niji, wants to shoot. It's gonna be out of play, goal kick. Uh, Folks also might be wondering about the teams involved. Not every team that you've seen outdoor are involved. There are two divisions, an east and a west, with five teams in each division. And uh, the Rowdies will be playing only inside their division during the regular season. Anderson, McLeod tries to go by Colin Fowles. We play on. Al Niji, number 19, with the ball. Niji keeps it. Now here's Rabofsky. Nice run by Steve. He wants to shoot. It's off the boards. Mm. Oh. And we do have a substitution. We didn't think we'd see Winston DeBose, according to Gordon Jago's conference yesterday. But Winston in here in the second half. We don't know if Jonko Balecki got a knock or what. But uh, at any point, Winston into the game. And straight away, one goes in. But it was well thought out by the strikers as they converted the rebound. They had a number of chances in the first half. Finally, they got the conversion. Jamari. Sets it up, and here's Ortiz Velez to follow up. That's the kind of uh, play that Gordon Jago wanted his rallies to do. Maybe the strikers had a spy somewhere. That's right. Actually, this was a little more difficult for DuBose to uh, diagnose because it was so close to the goal. Yes. He had to make that quick move. Some of the earlier shots, which were up against the boards there, were far enough away the goalie just let them go and stayed by. Ortiz Velez comes out with it. Here's Jamari. Those are the gentlemen who have gotten Fort Lauderdale on the board. And Rabovsky now, number 14. Again, he goes down. If you're wearing a certain type of shoe and you don't pick up your feet, the studs will catch on the indoor surface and actually break you, stop you. Barilich in close. Yes! Oh! Peter with a marvelous finish. And that's the kind of play we saw from Peter outdoors. Barilich with a great bit of touch. Settled the ball and then whack before Mauza had a chance to come and cut down the angle. Great soccer from Berlin, so the Rowdies get it right back. Peter deadly with either foot. Peter Berlin with 13 19 left in period three. And three is also the amount of goals the Rowdies have. So Peter Anderson and Peter Berlin haven't fun, but Peter's doing well tonight. Absolutely. That was angled beautifully just inside the post. Here's Dubos out quickly to John Gorman. And another aspect of indoor that's different from outdoor that I'm sure the fans appreciate. The goalkeeper does not punt. He distributes. Makes the game uh, more of a control flowing game, more enjoyable to watch. Number five, Wiggum Anson. Whalen puts it in play. Here's Chris Atelli. Shot. Dubos with a save. Irving right there to try and pick up the pieces. Mm. Dubos tried to handle outside of the box, and that's what they're calling. Dubos came out of the box, kind of lost his composure there as far as knowing where the penalty area was. Inside that rectangle is the only where only area that he's actually a goalkeeper. Outside of it, he's just a regular field player, and he violated the laws. That's just what he did. Uh, I believe he was claiming he was pushed into the ball out there, but he here's here's the kick. And Whalen doesn't do well, pulls it out of play, goal kick rallies. Fort Lauderdale should have done more with it. 
12.43 now left in period three. Goal kick, Gorman. John Gorman, number three. Out to Barilich. Nice ball to Maurer. Tommy Maurer makes a nice run. Barilich gets it back. Look at this soccer. Dougie Wark wants to turn and shoot. Blocked by Whalen. Ivanchikov, number 18. On the floor for the Rowdies now. Gorman, Maurer, Ivanchikov, Wark, and Barilich. John Gorman battles with David Irvin. John keeps it away from Fort Lauderdale. Great soccer by John Gorman. Now a whistle. David Irving called for a minor violation of pushing. Free kick. Rowdies. Barilich is 15. Patient. Waits for Wark. Dougie wants to pull it back. Barilich was there. A little communication problem, but still good thought on the part of the Rowdies. Wark is the forward man up way front in the second unit. And he's the one they try to get it to as the target, as the focal point. Here's Chris Atelli. Wants to shoot off the boards. A lot of green shirts in the way, and Fort Lauderdale struggles to convert the goal. And a lot of bodies down now. This time a violation against the rallies. Mauer call for taking down Tony Whalen. On a hard surface, too. An injury <laughs> like this, you can just scrape your knee, your thigh. There's uh, a pretty good burn you can get. Wiggum Anson off with an injury. Oh, Maurer takes it back to Dubos. Tommy Maurer, number 19. Could have been close to an own goal. Barilich, number 15 now for Tampa Bay. Looks long to Dougie Wark. Wark oh. tries to turn it inside for Maurer. Too many strikers. Here's Korish out with it, number 12. Bob Korish. Pushed up to Tony Whalen. He's their team captain. Here's Chris Atelli, nicely turned. In the corner, marked up by Gorman. Struck by Whalen, but Dubos with no trouble. Ivanchikov, nice ball to Gorman. Up front, he's got Maurer and Wark. Shot through to Mausner. And out quickly are the strikers. Chris Atelli. The strikers having better success on the transition. Barilich on Chris Atelli. Whalen inside to Irving. Oh, it's going to go in. Chris Atelli converts, and it's 3-2 now. The strikers come back in the second half with two goals. Tony Chris Atelli there to pick up the pieces, and we'll see it again. A muddle in the corner. Whalen knocked it into Irving. Came off of Chris Atelli, and then it was all there for Tony Chris Atelli to, to beat Dubos. Easy touch into the back of the net. 3 2, the Rowdies on top. They kick it off. On the floor now, Peter Anderson, Perry Vanderbeck, Vandervein, Auguste, and Qureshi with Dubos in goal here in the second half. Peter Anderson with two first half goals for Tampa Bay. Vanderbeck, number 12, worked out nicely. Gets it back. Here's Anderson again. And Niji comes away with the errant ball. Here's Auguste in the corner for the Rowdies. 10-17 now left in period three. 3-2 three, Tampa Bay. More in a moment. Peter Anderson top of the box. Opportunity off the post. They're calling it out of play. It hit the screen or the uh, goal indicator lights. That's what happened. So it's goal kick. And here's the ball. Jamari number 17. Has Ortiz Velez in the corner. Here's Ortiz Velez back to Jamari. Nice soccer by Fort Lauderdale. Niji shot. Dubos, Velez comes away with it. Pushed out to Jamari, but Qureshi with a foot in the way. The strikers barren down now, showing a little more fight around the penalty area. If you found a few openings coming down that middle there. Chris Atelli uh, worked for that goal, but he had a couple of opportunities to move in, and he did come up with the, the big score. Here's Niji, tries to turn it. Ortiz Velez with a lovely shot. Niji comes back and battles Dubos. And now Jamari comes up with Winston's distribution, pushes it out to Rabowski, who's back on the floor. Steve Rabowski. Ortiz Velez. Rabowski and Niji, top of the box, waiting for the pass, but it comes back to Jamari. Jamari and Perry Vanderbeck on defense. Vanderveen takes it away for the Rowdies. Here comes Tampa Bay, number nine, Anderson. Is three on two as they come in. Vanderveen wanted to shoot. Now Vanderbeck. Oh, oh, he didn't get much on it. 
He wanted to crack it off the boards and bring it out for Vandervein, but now Jamere for Fort Lauderdale with 8.20 left, period three. Long ball to Niji. Auguste on defense. Right now only two strikers in the attacking zone. Niji on Auguste. Augie with the sliding tackle. You got to be brave to go down on the slide on this indoor stuff. Anderson. Vandervein. Push through to Anderson. Marvelous soccer. Fouls are out with an equally marvelous save. Vandervein, number five. Again, push through for Anderson, but Fouls breaks it up. The ball out quickly to David Irving. Chris Atelli back on the floor for the strikers. Fouls, number 22, with the ball. Chris Atelli gets the ball. No, he called for the pass, but here's Irving. The fouls off the boards. Colin fouls, number 22, and Vandervein having a goal. And now Tony Whalen. Whalen tries to find Chris Atelli. It's going to be hard to push those balls long through like that. There's just too many bodies in the way. Chris Atelli just went over to the uh, sidelines. He is not one of the world's fastest players, but he just seems to have an, an eye for where to go, where the ball should be, and where it's going to carry him off the boards. This is a game where speed is not necessarily as important as quickness, the ability to change direction very quickly. Vandervain again trying to find Anderson. Fowles cuts it out. Whalen long to Chris Sotelli, who's found his space again. He tries to go by Koreshi. Opportunity, yes. It's all tied up. Marvelous soccer by Tony Cristatelli and David Irving for Fort Lauderdale. Brilliant stuff. You gotta love it even if you're on the other side. Pushed right through the legs of Farouk Qureshi. Winston Dubos couldn't carry it. Cristatelli picks up his own rebound. They just put the spotlight on him here. And <laughs> you see that halo as he goes off. Yeah. As we said, Chris Atelli on loan from the Washington Diplomats of the NASL. And now the Rowdies try to get back ahead. Here's Barilich back on the floor. Barilich, Wark, McLeod, Gorman, and Qureshi. There's a whistle. The referee talks to Barilich and says, let's calm it down. Free kick in play. There you see it. McLeod goes by fouls. Shot. Wiggum Anson for Fort Lauderdale. Fouls back to Mauser. Danger. Wes McLeod appeals to the referee, but no success. Colin Fouls. Tony Whalen. Six and a half minutes left, third period. Looks for Niji. He's got him. John Gorman on his back. Al Niji, number 19. In the corner, you see Gorman on defense. Niji tries to get it to David Irving. Close to the line. Dubos with the save. Say the beautiful and talented Miss Vicki Carr brings you 60 minutes of dynamic musical entertainment performed in concert with the Edmonton Symphony Orchestra tomorrow night at 10 on 44. The strikers go ahead. David Irving got a pass, turned, struck it, and beat Dubose on the ground. Fort Lauderdale suddenly find the range indoor. Four to three. David Irving, one of their top outdoor forwards. Tony well, Whalen is a very feared uh, player for the strikers. He was right there, and the tide, as you can see, has turned so dramatically in favor of the Fort Lauderdale strikers, trailing 2-0 at the half. They now trail, they now lead 4-3, and it's the Tampa Bay Rowdies who will find themselves trailing. And we must say that uh, David Irving at the top of the box was totally unmarked when he got the pass. Opportunity by Atriz Velez, off the boards. Dougie Wark now for Tampa Bay. He's number 13. Looks long for John Gorman. Tries to find Berlich, who is converged on by Colin Fowles. He broke the law of free kick and play for Tampa Bay. Berlich to Wes McLeod. Right now, the Rowdy's not doing a lot of running off the ball. I think they may be feeling the uh, intense physical pain right now. Here's Ivanchikov. Number 18, find some room. McLeod, into the corner to Wark. Chance, Wark shot, Mauser save. Ortiz Velez with Mauser's distribution. Here's Chris Atelli again, but Barilich will get in the way. Back to Dubos, quickly to Wark. Five minutes, 10 seconds left, period three. Doug Wark, off to Barilich. Goal kick, Fort Lauderdale. 
amazing the way that the game can change around. A total of two goals in the first half. We've had five more goals scored in this third period alone, which still has over five minutes to go. They'll bring it back and put it in play. On the goal kick. Here's Karish. Nauser looks long. Ortiz Velez with a chest trap. Push back to Niji. He's number 19. Al Niji. Avanchikov on his back. And here's Wes McLeod. Looks long off the boards to Dougie Wark. Marvelous pass by West. Let's see what the Rowdies can do with it. Wark gets by two men. He's going to cross it back to Gorman. Oh, Wiggum Anson saves the equalizer because it was destined for the foot of wide open John Gorman. Paul Lauderdale quickly breaks away. Ortiz Velez. Niji, number 19. Avanchikov. Dubos comes out of the box, uses his feet. Niji comes back with it for Paul Lauderdale. The striker's looking strong here in period three. Avanchikov sends it back out, but here's Wiggum Anson for Paul Lauderdale. And here's Bob Corish wide open. Inside Ortiz Velez. Back to Jamari, number 17. They like to use a little give and go just off to the left side of the penalty area and then going down the middle for the return. Mauser out of the box, challenged by Dougie Ward. Arnold Mauser, the goalkeeper for Fort Lauderdale. Here's Peter Berlich, number 15, as the Rowdies look to tie it up. Berlich has a very strong shot. Mm. Oh, and almost powered one in. Move that ball beautifully from his left to his right foot and then let fly with a bullet. Just like an ice hockey player with stick handle. It's marvelous Absolutely. stuff. David Irving in the corner, marked up by two routings. That means somewhere else there's a Fort Lauderdale player free. Berlich on defense. Vanderbeck now on the floor. Wiggum answered in pursuit of him. Harry Vanderbeck, number 12, off to John Gorman. Peter Anderson now on the floor. He's up front. Vanderbeck. Back to Ivanchikov. Here's John Gorman. Just under three minutes now, left in period three. Gorman shot, Mauser save. Chris Atelli on the run. He's on mark. Comes to Irving. Oh, Irving closed down just a bit, and the ball got by him. Barilich for the Rowdies. Cut out nicely by Korish. Chris Atelli. Oh, he wanted to push it for Irving, but kind of lost his momentum as he leaned back. And here's Anderson. It's two on two. Yes! But yeah. great fast break. That's the first time we've really seen it tonight. And Berlich gets the pass from Anderson, and it's all tied up. Let's watch it again. Yeah. This time, the strikers went in. There was nobody back to defend, and as they came down there, that one lone defender came back. But before that, the thrust was two men down all by themselves, and you saw the goal result as Barilich has just tied this game at 4-4 with 2.25 to go in this quarter. On the floor now for the strikers, Waylon Karish, Robotsky, Chris Atelli, and David Irving. Here's Karashi and Irving having a go into Dubos. With the score tied at 4-all, Tampa Bay and Fort Lauderdale, 2 10 left in period three more in a moment. Tom Keene and Bob Wolf back with you with 90 seconds left in period three. Taken down is Chris Atelli. There is no whistle. We play on. Here comes Vanderbank, who's back on the floor for the Rowdies. They'd love to get the go-ahead goal here in period three. Jan wants to shoot. Does! Oh! That's a great goal! As they forced Mauser to come out and then blew it by him. I think Van der Van knew he was going to shoot on goal from the halfway line. He drove hard, just like he was dribbling in basketball. Here's a look at it. Van der Van getting off a rocket, but blasting it on the left side. And the Rowdies now take a 5-4 to four lead with a minute and 17 to go in this third quarter. They came back with two quick goals, one to tie, now to lead. Dubos takes it off the foot of David Irving. It's important that he was strong there because Irving, as you can see, was right there to pick up the pieces. Vanderbeck, number 12, one of the top young American players in all of these United States, and he is a rowdy and currently training with the United States Olympic team in Fort Lauderdale. Anderson, Colin fouls on defense. Peter comes and gets it, shot off of Mauser's foot. It's going to come down. 
They're going to call it corner kick as they should with 46 seconds left. Barilich has scored twice. Anderson has uh, scored twice. Grisatelli has scored twice. And the Rowdies lead with 46 seconds to go in the quarter, five to four. Peter Anderson signaling folks to get into a scoring position. Auguste shot, knocked down by Nishi, and here comes Rovalski and the strikers with 40 seconds left to equalize in period three. Nice ball to Ortiz Velez. Nice cut out by Jan Vanderveen. Otherwise, it was one on one. Ortiz Velez still having to go with Vanderveen. Nishi, oh, off the boards. Rovalski cuts it off now and comes back. Here's strikers Steve Rovalski. Pushed out to Chimeri. Auguste on defense. Augie forces the bad pass, but it comes right back to Ortiz Velez, and now Croatia will get it in the corner. It's out of play. Kick in Fort Lauderdale. One thing you can't do is there's a one-goal lead in indoor soccer, and they're not going to. Seven seconds to go in this quarter. They need to shoot right about now. Here's Fowles. He will shoot. Yes. Close, but no cigar as the Rowdies go from period three to four with a 5-4 lead. And we'll have more from the West Palm Beach Auditorium right after this. Tom Keene and Bob Wolfback with you at the West Palm Beach Auditorium. We know you've enjoyed the exciting indoor soccer we've had on Channel 44 tonight. And this is the first NASL indoor season. The first Rowdies home game at the Bayfront Center is December 7th. The Detroit Express, the opponent. There are less than 2,000 indoor season tickets available. Don't be left out of the action. Call the Rowdies office right now for your indoor season tickets. Operators are standing by. Call 870-1122 in Tampa or Hillsboro or 585-1119 in Pinellas County for indoor soccer. There will be six home games in the NASL indoor season and uh, the first one December 7th against the Detroit Express. Why are you reminding the folks about uh, the Detroit Express coming in? Interesting development. Uh, out came Zelko Bolecki to warm up uh, between the third and the fourth period. They were making shots on goal. They were storming him, getting him all limber, <laughs> and there he is. Remember in the first half, he departed at the end of the half with Correct. a two nothing lead so here he's back for more right now the rowdies have the lead five to four but it was a a very difficult third period for yeah. tampa bay but they got the lead finally and now let's see what happens with the fourth quarter it was a there was a, a certainly a moment of time where they kind of lost it again and then when they got down there was that extra inspiration to get it back and they did it ever so well to come from behind on the floor for the strikers, it's Tony Crisotelli, number 13. Number 10 is David Irving. Six is team captain Tony Whalen. And number 25 on the floor for his bit of action, first bit of action, Kevin Murphy. And also into the game, number eight, Greg Preston. So the strikers get some fresh blood for the final 15 minutes. Here's Irving. Ivanchikov clears it away for Tampa Bay. Barilich got the uh, tiebreaker with a minute 17 to go. Van de Veen got the one that gave the Rowdies the lead they now hold. Barilich with the ball on the floor with him. Wes McLeod, number eight, shot. Oh, Wes was running through as well and tried to turn it. Mauser couldn't handle it. I don't know if McLeod got any of it at all, but he could have unsighted Mauser for a moment. Tony Whalen on the run. He's taken down or at least went down. I'm not going to say who took him down. Mauser. Opportunity and now McLeod. West goes down, taken down by number eight, Greg Preston. There will be a free kick. Nobody goes to the box, however. Here's West. He tries to turn and go down the wing. You see a leg in the way. He didn't get the ball. He got West McLeod's thigh and took him down hard. Barilich with a rocket. Goal kick, Fort Lauderdale. Outdoor, that may have been in the top corner of the net. Indoor, you got to be a little bit more on target. Although the uh, the target is a little wider and higher this year than last, is it not? Correct. Uh, the major indoor soccer league got underway a year ago. They came out with a higher but narrower goal, and the NASL, of course, has had a about a, a waist high goal really that was 16 feet wide. Both leagues got together and came up with a uniform set of laws and. Uh, 
the, the wider goals, the higher goals, they'd hope would get more high balls, heading balls into the goal and open up the game a little bit more. So far, though, Bob, I think all the goals we've seen would have been goals no matter if it was old style or new style. Here's McLeod. Tries to get by Murphy. Wants to shoot. Can't. Pushes it out to Berlich. Oh. Berlich tries to return it. West couldn't keep his footing. And it's Kevin Murphy, number 25, a young American player on the roster during the indoor season for the Strikers. David Irving now, number 10. Back to Greg Preston. Mauser with a steal. Tom, or rather, Tommy Maurer, number 19. Mauser, of course, the goalkeeper that Maurer is trying to shoot on, but coming away with it is Greg Preston. Out quickly to Chris Atelli. He goes down, and there is a foul on John Gorman. It was a bit of a late whistle, but nonetheless, free kick for the Strikers. The Strikers put some fresh blood on the floor. Roy Wigamanson, number five. Bob Koresh, number 12. Their youngsters leave the floor. Irving, nice work off the boards. Balecki gets the rebound. Here's Barilich. Flips it over Wigamanson's head, but Wigamanson knocks it back to Mauser. The big guy will have no trouble. I'm sorry, he does have trouble. He pushes it out of play. And we get a kick in for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. They will do it again and make sure that the strikers have all their five field players on the floor. McLeod, Gorman, Berilich, and now Doug Wark, along with Ivanchikov in the back. They try to find Berilich. Niji with a foot up, and Fort Lauderdale get it back. Here's Colin Fowles. Niji was just coming back on defense then yes. to intercept that pass. Oh, oh almost an own goal by Ivanchikov. He stuck a foot out. It was a cracking shot by Colin Fowles. The ball put in play on the kick in. Niji again wants to shoot. Deflection off of Ivanchikov. Here's Wigamanson. Again off the board. Battling in the corner they are. Ivanchikov, Wigamanson off the chest of Balicki. And Niji volleys it over the bar. Goal kick. Rowdies. That's what you call getting the good bounce right over the goal. <laughs> <laughs> For the Rowdies, very good. Not well struck by the Florida International graduate, Al Nisha. Again, we get substitutions. Ortiz Velez, number 16 on the floor for Fort Lauderdale. Perry, Perry Vanderbeck back. He gets the ball on a long pass by Karishi. Vanderbeck, number 12. Tries to knock it off of fouls. Marilich with a foot up. I'm surprised they didn't call dangerous play there on Marilich. Here's Colin Fowles, number 22. Shot, deflection, Malecki with a hand save. I think it was deflected off of Qureshi. Mm -hmm. Could have been in the back of the net without Jelko's right hand. Ortiz Velez off to Colin Fowles. Up front for Fowles in the penalty area, Al Niji right now. He's the only attacker. Now Ortiz Velez into the box. Niji couldn't get the rebound. Wigger Manson chases it down. 11 and a half minutes left in the game. The Rowdies hang on to a 5-4 lead. Wiggum answered into the corner. Off the boards. Cleared away by Vanderbeck. Waiting was Ortiz Velez for Fort Lauderdale. Couldn't get it. Doug Wark now. Nice ball out to Harry Vanderbeck. Vanderbeck wants to shoot. Pushes it out to Wark. Shot by Wark. Mauser with a hand save. No trouble for Arnie. Ortiz Velez, number 16. Colin Fowles, number 22. Fowles tries to go by Vanderbeck. All he does is go down, and the Rowdies get it back. Berlich tries to get it to Wart. Miss hit it. Here's Wiggum Anson in the way from Fort Lauderdale. Colin Fowles with room. Up front is Ortiz Velez. Off the screen, Velecki saves. Doug Ward. Torres with a head in play. And here's Ortiz Velez again. He's had a nice night for Fort Lauderdale. And Vanderbeck back on the floor for the Rowdies. Three Great on ball. two. Yes. Vanderbeck into the corner. Torres on his back. Wiggum Anson with the clearance. Kick in. Rowdies. One of the things that a goalie always dreads in a very confined area like this is being screened or a deflection. Correct. It's got to be miserable in this indoor game. Velez looking for Rabowski. Koreshi on defense for the Rowdies. 
Here's Whalen. Preston back on the floor. It's going to be off the boards, and here's Greg Preston, number eight. Pushes it through to Ortiz Velez. Volley. It's going to be over the goal. Goal kick for Rowdies. A little over nine and a half minutes now left in our indoor soccer opener for the Rowdies and the Strikers. Here's Doug Wark, but coming to take it away is Kevin Murphy in the corner. Wark, opportunity. Oh, I can't believe it. He's going to try and turn now. He's almost all alone. Mauser with the hand save. Goodness, he had an open goal and just mishit it. Here's August Vandervey. Up front, McLeod and Doug Wark. Jan wants to push it out to West. They get crossed up. Rovalski gets in the way. Vandervane goes down, and the strikers come forward. Whalen, number six. Irving. Tough defense by Koreshi and McLeod. And here's Belecki. Nice work by the green shirted Rowdies. Wark, number 13. Nice run by McLeod off the ball. West through the penalty area. Oh, oh great run by McLeod. Great ball. Still a chance. Mauser picks it up. West goes down. But you had to enjoy that bit of soccer between Doug Wark and West McLeod. It's just a bit behind McLeod. He had a little difficulty moving it around. Preston looks long for Rabowski. Gorman in the way. Back on the floor is John for the Rowdies. Vandervain. I sense a goal momentarily for somebody. John Gorman, number three. Pushes it to war. Preston gets in the way. The strikers come away with it. Greg Preston, number eight. Another young American player for Fort Lauderdale. Getting some hard work here indoor. John Gorman. Work leaves the floor. Vandervane loses the ball, and the strikers again come away with it. In is Peter Anderson in Doug Wark's place. Peter with two goals. The ball knocked out of play. It's going to be a striker kick in. The pace begins to tell right now, Tom, Whoa. coming down here. 7.50 to go last quarter. There's been a lot of constant running going on. Everybody's been involved in the action. The Rowdies leading 5-4. to four. And as we told you, Balecki is back in goal for this fourth quarter. Wiggum Anson for Fort Lauderdale. Bob Koresh chases it down up front. David Irving. Here comes the ball to David, number 10. Whalen is close by. Back to Koresh. McLeod chases it down, but Wiggum Anson goes by West. There's a whistle. It's going to be against the Rowdies and West McLeod. Free kick for Fort Lauderdale with seven and a half left in the game. Wiggum Anson puts it in play. Here's Tony Whalen. Whalen goes down, but he tripped over the ball, and Vanderbank comes up with it. Far side is Anderson. It's a bit behind Peter. McLeod. Oh, to Jan. Cross. Oh, credit Bob Corris with a goal saving sliding save. Of course, he couldn't use his hands. He's a field player, but what a great defensive play by the Englishman. Tremendous. It was three on two coming down. Chris Atelli back on the floor for the strikers. He's had good success around the goal, nipping in two. Avanchikov with tough defense, but Jamere comes away with it now for the strikers. Irving on the floor. Wiggum Anson tries to get cute, push it inside, but here's Jamere to pick up the pass. Shot mm. off of John Gorman. It's going to be a corner kick. 6.46, 5-4 rallies. More in a moment. Tom Keane and Bob Wolf back with you for the final six and a half here at the West Palm Beach Auditorium. The Rowdies on top five to four. Vanderbeck comes away with it, but here's Chris Atelier to come out with the rebound. Gorman takes it off the foot of David Irving. Gorman back to Belecki. Big, big play by Gorman that time. Chris Atelli would have been one-on-one -on -one without the great uh, touch of John Gorman. Long ball to Berlich. Vanderbeck to Berlich. Oh, Peter won the volley. Did miss hit it. Goal kick for Lauderdale. Hey, the Rowdies outdoor season tickets are now on sale as well. All seating is reserved this year, and you can select your favorite seats at Tampa Stadium now and pay 79 prices. Save big now on outdoor season tickets. Select your favorite seats by calling the Rowdies office right now. Operators are standing by 870-1122 Tampa Hillsboro and 585-1119 in Pinellas County. Rowdies 1980 soccer. 
Jamali number 17 for the strikers. Wiggum Anson, number five. He wants to shoot, does. Balecki right there. Holland Fowles, number 22. Tried to come in and pick up any rebound or mishandle by Balecki. Barilich comes out with it. He was being held. Here's Fowles. Tries to go by Qureshi off the boards. Nobody there to follow it. There was a whistle. Play had stopped anyway. And it'll be free kick for Rowdies. One of these times, Tom, will I keep one eye on the field and one eye on the clock? 5.30 left to go. Vanderbeck for Tampa Bay. Auguste back on the floor. Pushes it long for Anderson. Nice soccer. Right now, Peter doesn't have anybody up front to support, and he loses the ball. Here's Jamari. Jamari looks long for Niji, who's back in. Vanderbeck on his back. Niji mm. shot. Auguste now for Tampa Bay. He was pushed off on Colin Fowles using the hands. We saw it right on the screen. Say, how can you tell the cops from the robbers when the robbers turn out to be cops? WTOG presents Cliff Gorman in the hilarious comedy Cops and Robbers tonight at 11.30 here on 44. Anderson would like to get a hat trick and kind of ice it for Tampa Bay. Auguste. Pushed out the barrel, it's back to August, opening for Augie. Goal kick, Fort Lauderdale. Now uh, this was one time Anderson was imploring them to get on the ball. He was just to the left side Wide of the open. goal, and they passed him up, and he said, please. But it was one of those things. It's tough to look at both spots at once. Here's Jamari, pushed up to Colin Files as the strikers continue to probe for the equalizing tying goal. We play on, here's Anderson, number nine. Out to Barilich. Barilich converged on by Murphy and Jamari. The strikers come away with it. Mauser looks upfield. Whalen finds the distribution from Arnie. Double team. Qureshi comes away with it by the Rowdies. Good soccer. Auguste. Anderson. On his back is Murphy. And here's Alan Fowles. Pushed through to Tony Whalen, wants to shoot. Muffled by Vanderbeck, cleared away by the young American number 12. Anderson crashed down by Greg Preston. We'll have a free kick from the point of the infraction. Just under four minutes now. Time is of the essence. The Rowdies leading five to four. Another one would be nice for Tampa Bay. McLeod back on the floor. Barilich wants to shoot, does. Right to the stomach of Mauser. Auguste gets in the way of Mauser's distribution. The Rowdies have it back momentarily. Barilich back to Auguste. Cut out by Murphy, but here's Qureshi to pick up the Aaron ball. Wes McLeod, number eight. Right now, the game being played uncharacteristically in the middle zone. Anderson tries to go by Preston. Does momentarily. They're battling in the corner. Violation against Peter and the Rowdies. Free kick for the strikers. With 3.20 left. Whalen comes up floor. Long ball to Fowles. Fowles and Qureshi having a heck of a battle, and here's mm. Balecki. Colin Fowles playing hard. Time just to check on the time. We're approaching three minutes to go. The Rowdies clutching that 5-4 lead. Here's Van Der Veen. Long to McLeod, one-on-one. -on -one. Boom, off the boards. Wes again. Shot, no. Leaves it off for Anderson. It was so clogged in the goal mouth, they would have taken a great placement to stick it by both Murphy and goalkeeper Mauser. Long ball to Fowles. Robowski back on the floor now for the strikers. Whalen off the boards, Fowles mishits, goal kick. Three and a half minutes, make it two and a half minutes left. Five, four rallies, more in a moment. Tom Keene and Bob Wolf back with you for the final two and a half. Here's Vanderveen. Nice turn by Jan, but Wiggum Anson gets in the way. The two number fives having a go. Mauser gets the ball. Here's David Irving. Irving goes by Avanchikov. Off the boards. John Gorman comes away with it. Still, Balecki finds it. Oh, that has to be a hard throw for everyone as the ball kind of bounces around the penalty area with nobody in control. And another time check, two minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Rowdy's up five to four. John Gorman, marked up by Bob Korish and Chris Atelli. He's double teamed, comes back to McLeod. There's a whistle. There's gonna be a violation against the strikers. Free kick, Rowdy's. 
We also note that there, this is another difference between indoor and out. When the referee's whistle blows, the clock stops. Yes, that is decidedly different. Oh, Anderson to Vanderveen. Jan with a great move, shot off a of Mauser. He tried to get the deflection, tried to get the rebound off the boards, but Big Arnie comes to the task. 90 seconds now. Oh, McLeod with a great ball to Anderson. Back to Vanderveen. Without question, these three have had the best of it tonight. McLeod oh, Vanderveen. And that salts it away. Great work from Wes McLeod and Jan Vanderveen. They're celebrating 6-4. With a minute 25 left, looking good, Rowdies. Oh, what a beautiful pass. Let's take a look. McLeod on a given goal. Back to Van de Veen, right there at the goal mouth and in. And that should seal it. Although there is still time left. A minute 25 to go. The Rowdies lead 6-4. to four. Don't go away. No, don't go away. <laughs> the strikers on the attack in the corner is Irving. Now Wigga Manson comes away with it. He tries to go by McLeod. Off the boards, and here's Bilecki. And another rule. Jelko has five seconds to get the ball upfield and release it. Grabowski gets it away. Bilecki with a foot save. And Bilecki comes away with it. This is another rule that would keep the Rowdies or any team from stalling. When we speak about headliners, mark down Bilecki tonight. Oh. But we'll speak more about him after the last 45 seconds go by. Anderson again. The Rowdies may want number seven. McLeod finds Gorman free. Johnny would love it. Great hand save by Mauser, and you saw a great angle on the shot. 33 seconds. Push back to Avanchikov. Up to Vanderveen. Wiggum Anson, number five. Wiggum Anson in the corner to Rabowski. Pushed in, trying to find Chris Atelli. Off the mark. The Rowdies come up with it. Vanderveen out to Avanchikov. It's two on two. Pushed out to Anderson. Nice stuff by the Rowdies. And the countdown now. Five seconds to go to victory. Berilich to Avanchikov. Have a go, Sanji. Yes. And that's it. The Rowdies come away in their season opener with a 6-4 victory. Got to feel nice, even though right now I think they all feel very, very tired. Oh, a terrific victory. And Balecki right there, first one out with the uh, handshakes. He went in there. He played three quarters of the game and didn't give up a goal. That's correct. Excellent soccer. And uh, just a, a fine performance all around by the Rowdies. And again, we remind you that uh, when they get back home December 7th, you will see Steve Weckerly, Mike Connell, and Oscar Fabiani. Imagine that, those three players joining this fine squad tonight. Uh, you've got to look for the Rowdies to be the, the, the favorites in the division and the favorites really to go all the way. Oh, great talent. And when you put that talent together with all of the home crowd roar and the atmosphere that they will have when they get back home, I'll tell you, that's going to be some combination. Okay, we are at the end of the game. We are hoping to get either Gordon Jago or his fine assistant, Keith Peacock, in the booth with us to have some post-game conversation. Right now, let's take a break. There you see the final. An excellent victory where the Rowdies came from behind at one point. 6-4 Tampa Bay over the Strikers. 